All right, we've made it to the last nine weeks of notes. And like I said in class today, luckily we only have two more units to cover instead of more because we have some review to do at the end of the nine weeks. So congratulations on making it this far. Just stick with me for a few more weeks and we'll learn the rest of our new information about how things work. And then we'll start our review to get ready for the end of the year, if you can believe it. Um, today in class, we started to talk about a lab that we'll do in class tomorrow where we demonstrate different types of waves with water. And so I want to be sure we understand the vocabulary behind that so we can use that in conversation tomorrow. So if you have any questions about this stuff, make sure you take note of that on your paper, and then we'll talk about it in class when we're all together again. Just to review a little bit about our vocabulary, a wave is a disturbance that transfers energy from one place to another. So this is how it relates back to our introduction to energy back in January. Material that a wave travels through is called a medium. Basically, a medium is any type of matter um, made up of atoms. So you could talk about a wave traveling through a solid or a liquid or gas or even a plasma. Waves are created when a source of energy causes the medium to vibrate in place. So in our lab together, we'll see a couple of different types of interactions among the waves and then uh, the different obstacles that surround the waves. The first thing you'll see is reflection. And I know you've heard this word before in thinking about a mirror. So a reflection takes place when a wave bounces back off of a surface that it can't pass through. So examples you could write down include a ball bouncing off of a wall. If you throw it at the wall, can't go through the wall, it's going to bounce back off of it. Um, an image in a mirror that you see is the light reflecting off of the mirror and going back into your eye to interpret what it sees. An echo is also a reflection. It's a type of sound that reflects off of surfaces like a building or maybe you're standing off of, uh, on top of a mountain and you can hear the, the reflected sound as it bounces around the surfaces through the open valley. Another type of interaction is called refraction. This is maybe a little less familiar, and this is when waves bend as they enter a different medium and they change speed. So, for instance, this picture down here shows light traveling through air, and then once it hits glass, you can see that there's kind of a break, and it ends up bending. So we end up having this broken image in this glass, like with this pencil sitting here. It looks like the pencil's broken, but if you pick the pencil out of the glass, you can see that it's whole. Other examples of how refraction works are rainbows um, and, again, an appearance of something being bent in the water or if you were to look into um, a goldfish tank from the top and you follow the fish around, it looks like it's in a different location than it actually is based on um, the way that the light waves move between the air and the water. Finally, diffraction is the third type of interaction that you might see. This is when waves bend and spread out around the edge of a barrier. So in this picture here, we've got a room, and sound is traveling out of the room and out of the doorway. And, uh, you know, if you're walking down the hallway in the middle of a class, you probably notice that you can hear teachers' voices traveling up and down the hallway. Um, it's not as though you walk by the door, and that's the only time you're going to hear what's going on inside the classroom. So that's an example. Another example that we'll see um, demonstrated in class tomorrow for like a real life example would be water waves spreading out throughout a harbor because of the, the motion of the boats in the water. So what we want to do here in this example on the right side of your paper is match the pictures to the wave interactions that were discussed here. So letters A, B, and C should match up to reflection, refraction, or diffraction. So take a second and decide which ones you think it'll be. If you want to take a second and pause, that might be a good idea. And I'll go ahead and write down what I put, and we'll talk about it. Hopefully you matched up A with diffraction, because as the waves enter the barrier, they start to spread out as they pass through that little opening. B, you should have matched that up with reflection, because here we have a medium that can't be passed through, so the wave ends up bouncing back. Finally, C, we have a different medium that the wave goes into, so we have a bend. This is called refraction. Finally, a couple of other ways that waves will interact together. 
One thing is called constructive interference. If I give you constructive criticism, then that means that I'm, I'm trying to um, give you some advice that would ultimately build you up or to help you along in a kind way. So to be constructive is to build on something. So when we have constructive interference, this is when waves are interfering together, or they combine, and they make a wave that has a larger amplitude. And you've learned through vocabulary that amplitude has to do with the height of a wave. So you should see these two individual waves. They come together, and we end up with a wave that's a lot taller. The opposite of this is called destructive interference. And again, because the word interference, we know that the waves are combining together. You can think of a sports analogy. If there's interference, then you have like a collision take place between two athletes. If I'm destructive, if I'm giving you like destructive advice or somebody is a destructive person, they're breaking things down. And so when these two waves come together, we end up having the crest and the trough meet and they kind of cancel each other out. So we end up with a smaller amplitude, and sometimes it's completely canceled out, so there's no wave at the very end. Finally, there's something called resonance, and you might be familiar with this without realizing it. It's the increase in the amplitude, or the height, if you want to write that down, of vibration that occurs when external or outside vibrations match the object's natural frequency. So we know that all objects are made up of matter, and the atoms are constantly moving because they all have energy. And so they're all moving at the same rate um, and the same amount of vibration. So if you can create a sound that has the same pitch, which means the same note, and it has just enough amplitude in the wave, it could move those molecules far away from rest enough to make something shatter. So if you've ever seen a cartoon or a commercial in which there's an opera singer singing this really long, drawn-out, high note, and suddenly glass starts to shatter all around, that's actually based in truth. And I'm going to post a video of a person doing this, and there's um, a Mythbusters episode that dedicates some time to this person. But he can actually make a sound that would cause glass to shatter. So I'd encourage you to look at that video after you're done with these notes. So remember to look over these words so we can use them in class tomorrow with our lab. And again, if you have any questions about how waves interact, please be sure to bring it up in class tomorrow so we can all discuss it. Have a good evening, and I'll see you later.